Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I'm going to begin by sending over a carbonite detector to Minmus and that will allow my little carbonite miner to head down to the surface at a location where it can drill for carbonite and thereby fill up the station. Uh, we'll check out the station's conversion capabilities making sure that it can convert that carbonite into liquid fuel and oxidizer. So that's the first thing. But uh, somebody in the comments mentioned that I seem to be neglecting Duna, it was sort of a what about Duna sort of thing. And um, I might have missed a transfer window, I don't think so, I don't know. Uh, a transfer window between Kerbin and Duna takes place every 227 days. So uh, we still got 174 days left. It might be that during the EVE mission I missed one, but, I, but I'm pretty sure the EVE mission took like less than 30 days, I think, and we, we've spent about 50 days since the last transfer window so I mean it's a little bit complicated but uh, yeah I think uh, we've just been waiting for the transfer window to Duna I don't think I've missed one so yeah um, the EVE mission uh, the Explorer X run EVE I don't think I'm gonna send it directly to Duna so I'm gonna get rid of that one I'm gonna have the Explorer mission come back to Kerbin get its probes from Kerbin and then uh, after it comes back to Kerbin on this transfer, that shouldn't take too long and it'll be able to transfer to Duna on this one. Or maybe we can uh, send it off to Jewel, we'll see. But we'll have it uh, come back to Kerbin first. Uh, this this uh, alarm is for the contracts that we have here. We've still got to make sure that we la land something on EVE that can transmit data. Um, I guess we do have a dual contract so I can add that alarm, but uh, other than that we've got two satellites to put into orbit around EVE. So yeah, okay, but uh, let's add the dual alarm, just so I don't forget to transfer stuff to dual. Uh, that's an 86... Uh, hmm... Well, so that'll be before the Spore X comes back, so we'll have to send something else to dual. Maybe, let's see, what about a direct transfer from EVE to Jewel? I don't think the Explorer X has that kind of juice. We'll check, we'll check. Okay, so lots of transfer opportunities and further opportunities for colonization, but for now let's take on the Carbonite. So here's our little Carbonite detector, and it's, uh, it's not much, it's just a, a detection array here, uh, probe core, battery, reaction wheel, RCS, no thruster of its own, it's just got RCS, uh, I mean no engine, no proper any of these, just RCS and solar panels. So just mod propellant. Other than that, it's on the Sparrow launcher, but you notice Sparrow 2, and that is because I am debuting a possible solution to our problem with the, with the Maximus launcher, and that is aerodynamic strikes. You see these here? Uh, these are the wing strakes and other uh, wing connector type D parts scaled down to 25%. I don't know how far is going to deal with this because the scale down parts, I don't know about the lift on the scale down parts and whether it's really uh, giving the right indication for that. So that's a complication and I don't know if far is going to go with one indication for the lift. Or, uh, it's probably going to try and figure out the lift on its own. And so, but the key thing about aerodynamic strikes is that, of course, they kill roll. That's their goal in life. And so they channel the air through. Uh, it's possible I need eight instead of four, but for now I'm going with four. Uh, probably on the Maximus, I will try eight. Best to go. Oh, these engines are doing their detached thing again. Okay. So, yeah. So their job is to kill roll. And I hope they will do that. Uh, another job that they perform is general stability because as you can see I put them very close to the center of mass the average center of mass and I'll show you what I mean by that so uh, when this tank empties you can see that uh, as we're going back down the center of lift is going to be behind the center of mass again so that is one thing that they do and so you just put them right around the average center of mass and they'll do their trick um, possible to put them in other locations. I've already designed the new Maximus using the aerodynamic strakes instead of the canards. Um, so we'll see how that works out. 
and they're certainly a little bit less obtrusive than the canards so that's good I don't want to put the canards, uh, the thing is I don't want to put the canards backwards or backwards or doing anything like that so uh, we shall see certainly in the last episode the canards were not doing what they were supposed to be doing so I think this will work better but uh, we'll use the sparrow to check that out okay so uh, with that let us launch this over to Minmus and start detecting carbonite there okay here we go uh, let's let's close some windows we don't need that don't really need that it's getting a little bit cluttered here Okay, so SAS on. I don't think. Well, I'll keep that. All right, so throttle up, and yep. Yeah, with the Maximus, I expect I'll have to put these higher and that's because it's got those big wings on the bottom of it and so they'll have to compensate for that I'm also planning to remove the control surfaces on the canards, the little uh... The little, uh whatchamacallit, uh, elevators if you will those control surfaces uh, certainly weren't doing anything good for the vehicle I seem to recall the sparrow having a little bit of wiggling on the way up before. It didn't seem to this time, so that's, that's the first good sign. But maybe I'm mistaking it for a different... We've, we've brought back down quite a lot of different vehicles, haven't we? So, oh no, he is wiggling. We're getting wiggling now. But then again, it's not like the aerodynamic strakes could control it right now. Should drop fairings. Okay. And while we're at it, extend solar panels. That'll help us recharge a bit. Well, not in the dark. And let's circularize this thing. Well, okay, close enough. Off. Uh, say yes. Decouple. Okay, let's start this out. Okay, it is free. Got the little bits. Alright, now this. Okay, well. Same thing we do every time. in the dark though. Uh, actually I can use I can use my longitude. I don't need to even create a maneuver node. And I'm gonna bring the periapsis down now. From 120 my old number in stock was 26 kilometers. Uh, we're not quite at 120 we're like 116 on average. But um, I think I'm going to aim for, let's say, uh, 23. 23 sounds like a good adjustment for Ferrum Aerospace. Now, I really don't want Smart ASS to hold orbit retrograde all the way down. As was pointed out in the comments, of course, eventually you want surface retrograde, not orbit retrograde. There's a difference, so. Okay, so the little engines that were resized are gonna fake overheat first. So that's what's going on. But that suggests that we'll eventually get real overheating, so gotta be careful about that. The parachutes in particular. So it is the fake overheat, as you can see. Looks like we got undershoot by a fair amount. So uh, more than 23 kilometers, maybe, maybe 
lean closer to 24. Hmm, not, not, not close at all. Definitely at least 24 kilometers should be our periapsis on trying this out. Now, where are the mountains? I have no idea. Okay, now definitely Smarty SS does not need to be holding that retrograde. I brought it closer before. Maybe I, I guess I should just use the old number for the Sparrow. It's obvious that that uh, some of my other vehicles need adjustment for far, but the Sparrow, I guess, is more of a blunt object than, uh, than say, the Maximus. The Maximus with its big wings in the back, or the Feather, for instance. So far affects those more than this. I should have just gone with the old stock number for this, because it doesn't have so much aerodynamic. Well, it does now. It's got a little bit of aerodynamic, so it'll need a little bit of a shade on the stock number, but not too much. Oh, topple. Ah. Well, there's nothing we, much we can do with a slope like that. I'll, I'll pick up that piece if possible. Can we pick up that piece? Ah, uh, we can't recover it. Okay. Well, we'll have to recover it with something well, uh, outside. We'll recover the debris. All right. All right, enough of this. Uh, no, let me go to a piece that's not floating around too much. Oh, we can recover this piece. All right. Okay, it's nighttime, but let me try and get a Kerbal out to plant a flag, shall we? Okay. Landing marker one. I'm just going to call it that. And that'll be fine. We now have a flag planted. Okay, well, one other matter while we're here, and that is the fact that after asking what I should do with that Class A asteroid that we've got around Minmus, the general response seemed to be that we should attach it to the station around Minmus and grab a Class E asteroid as our Minmus moon. And so we've got some likely targets. This this is a class E. Let's track this one. So it's got an encounter in five days, periapsis, a reasonable height, and an escape. Is there anything actually crashing into us? Uh, there's another one. Let's track that. Uh, encounter in 46 days. No, it's got a fair periapsis. Uh, so well, well, we'll track both of them, but I think probably this one is the one that we'll be most interested in. So we'll add a SOI change alarm for that one. And for that, we'll probably need the Maximus to send something out. Uh, maybe we'll send the one that's already attached to the asteroid around Minmus. Uh, but we might need some extra help as well. We'll see. So, yep, we'll aim for this one in five days which should be well which will be pretty quick because uh, once we get our carbonite detector out we that'll be about three days so yep let's go do that first though obviously class E asteroids are orders of magnitude bigger than the class A's but uh, our our little space tug beta there is sort of orders of magnitude bigger than it needed to be to handle a class A asteroid in the first place. So we're not too bad off, I think. I think we have to be below uh, 750 kilometers for the carbonite detector to work properly. Let me fire up the carbonite detector just to make sure it works. Let's see. There we go. That's showing the hot spots. But let's hide those on Kerbin for now. So I'm only going to attach the Class A asteroid to the to the station to the Minimus station. If we get that uh, Class E asteroid, I'm not gonna do it first. Oh. Okay, alright. 
So we're gonna get the Class C asteroid into orbit around Minmus first. No, we won't we won't leave Minmus without a moon. Let's put it that way. Okay, well we're below 500 kilometers. That should be all right. Okay, and the other thing we need is to approach with a high inclination so that we can do a maximal amount of scanning. So that will have to happen, but otherwise we're looking good. Now I should say about Duna, of course we could, no go away, uh, we could send stuff before the transfer, it just takes more Delta V. And that means with, uh, with the same launcher we'll be carrying less. So yeah, that's the trade-off. So we could send something over, I mean there's nothing barring that, it's just that it's not as efficient. And we have to be a minimum height above, and I think probably keeping 250 is probably for the best. Okay, now we can start up the detection, start resource scan, display hotspots. Not a whole lot of hotspots on Minmus. Okay, that's good enough. Right, let's point it at the planet to make it seem like it's scanning stuff. Okay. And if we take a look, okay, this isn't a very good vantage point. Let's see, map view, do you show carbonite hotspots? No. Huh. Interesting why we have a marker there. I mean, uh, why we have that little X, I wonder. Um, okay, well, anyway, let's go to our station and see about uh, landing the lander somewhere where there's carbonite. You know, we haven't come up with a station naming convention for this series. In in my uh, Hard Time series, I'm using the islands of Japan as as our station names, so Shin Honshu, Shin Kyushu, and so forth. Um, Trying to think of a good way to name this stuff, because right now this isn't named properly at all. For now, I'll call it Minmus Station, but I'll have to think about that. I didn't think about it before. Okay, so time to decouple the lander. Well, that was a little bit more explosive than I wanted. But it looks like everything's separated properly, and we are following the lander, which is the part that we want. Now, there aren't any hot spots in sight on this side. But I think there are on the other side, but it's tough to plan if uh, those hotspots... I, I, I could have sworn I was able to show them on the map before. We needed the big solar panels to power the carbonite retrieval system. So yes, that's, that's really what our lander is like. Okay. Uh, let's see now. Uh, there seems to be a clump down here. It's not going to make it easy to run. But let's try and find something closer to the the inclinations that we need to come back to the station. Well, we haven't activated the engine yet. Uh, well, I guess that's something to show. Come on. Oh no! Ah, oh, we don't have any fuel. Oh, I have to refuel it. Well, at least it's got some propellant. I forgot about refueling it. Okay, right. Ah, see, you have to remember all your steps. Okay, so setting in a station as a target. It shouldn't be too hard to get back to it. It's always suspicious when it auto saves. I'm not entirely sure whether I'm about to crash the game or not. Okay, well, we've got magnetism. A little bit violent magnetism but we got magnetism all right okay now we're ready to go uh, always seems that there's some dot on the horizon that we can't see anymore after we get closer it's not very helpful well there's a bunch right there did they're disappearing they're disappearing stop that Okay, I'm going to go back to our satellite to see what's really going on here. There's a carbonite, a carbonite concentration. Okay, so this, this does have carbonite concentration on this map. Okay. 
Okay, so here we are with the Carbonite Miner. I've renamed it for clarity. We're looks like we're approaching our apoapsis here. So then we see close to our periapsis to the south there's one field, but we cross right over another field here, and that seems to be a more appropriate target. So we can just uh, head for that, and that'll leave us at a latitude that is easily accessible to the station. Uh, but we'll, it'll be easy to transfer back to the station, let me put it that way. Um, seems to be, well, let's see. Doesn't really, oh, it's got latitude and longitude down there. So beginning at 135 degrees east, ending at 168 and we need about 13 degrees. Well, we won't change the inclination, so we'll probably be at the right inclination at that point. Uh, so just let's say 135 to 168. And we've got our position here, so we'll be able to aim for that. And it's not too hard to get down to the surface of Minmus, so we'll be able to pinpoint that pretty easily. But this would be a little bit harder if. I hope scanning the moon is alright. Uh, I didn't recall us having this problem not being able to see the bumps on the moon. Obviously uh, I remember the bumps on the moon being very prominent in fact. So yeah this is a little bit weird. Okay so the start of the field should be directly opposite our current position but let's aim for the middle of the field so let's say 150-ish and so we'll start retroburning at 30 degrees west seems like quite a slope that we've got here okay we are over the field now so let's just get this down wherever it happens to be well the biome is quite aptly named it's called slopes not the best place to try to mine for carbonite obviously we've got lots of delta V but that's because we're running empty on carbonite right now once the carbonite is filled we're gonna have a lot less than that okay well it's quite a slope but we're on it let's not waste any time deploy drill uh, actually, maybe we should wait for daylight. Uh, l let's just quickly see if we can extract some carbonite. Yes, we are extracting carbonite. But if we continue like this, it's going to deplete our electric charge. So let's stop that for now. Okay, now we've got full electric charge. Our solar panels are clearly working. Yes, very good. Let's uh, deploy both drills, in fact, and start drilling. All right, well, I'll be back with you once we fill up. We need to see whether we can bring this back up to the station safely, and that'll prove the viability of the system. Okay, we have completed carbonite extraction, and you can see that as I stop it and retract the drill, we are now 24 tons instead of just 6 tons. Our delta V has gone from 2400 to 450, or close enough. And of course we've got the mod propellant to work with. Now, if we were going to rendezvous with the station, which I have selected, uh, the optimal place to do it would be when we are all the way around and back around here so right around here because that's where our current location would touch the orbit of the station but I'm going to see how well this works out with a non-optimal situation okie dokie so initially we'll just go east and then we'll adjust as we go along ooh just barely able to lift off this thing is real heavy right now Current acceleration 1.25 meters per second squared. Okay, lift the, lift the legs. Okay. 
And then, of course, it's reaction wheel control. I could turn on it. RCS if I was really worried about maneuvering, but yeah, it's just very hefty right now. Feels very hefty. That'll slow us down. And then we'll 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 correct. Uh, I, again, I'm I'm deliberately being a little bit wasteful here, so that I can sense my margins out. Okay, yeah, I'm going to boost up to this intentionally high orbit here in order to let the station catch up with us. It's currently behind us here. And we've got the Delta V for that, so this will be a worst case scenario sort of situation. So what I'm going to see is how much surplus we get out of this carbonite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the fuel that's still on board the station into this. I'm going to transfer this carbonite out, convert it to liquid fuel and oxidizer, and then uh, fill this up completely, and then see how much liquid fuel and oxidizer is left over, and that'll be our surplus, what we actually gained from doing the, doing the mining. And so that's what I want to see, the least that we'll get out of each mining trip. Okay, 800 meters. But it's actually on the part that's... Uh, I don't want that part actually, because that's getting into the dark. I'd rather have it at the start of daylight. So that's what I'm aiming for here. Alright, well one kilometer. I'll take that. Okay, so we still got 121 meters per second of delta V out of the 450 that we started out with. And the rest we'll do with monopropellant. Ah, well, the monopropellant does not do a very good job of slowing uh, even minor adjustments to velocity when the thing weighs 20 odd tons. So let me actually use throttle here. And we are docked. Okay, so now it's the logistics side of things. We need to figure out whether this is really worthwhile or not. So, carbonite tank. Actually, I think I could just convert directly without transferring to carbonite. Let's just check. Uh, not the distiller. Converter, right. So, activate LFO mix. Yep, it's uh, grabbing the carbonite and converting to liquid fuel and oxidizer. While it is doing that, I'm going to transfer the fuel... Oh, darn. Well, I, th I think we only had like three and five units here. I was supposed to transfer the remaining fuel here into the lander. But, uh, well, we'll leave that be. We certainly used more fuel to get here than we needed to, so it's fair enough. The carbonite uh, actually has more mass than the resulting LFO mix, which is interesting. So that's the reason why there's sort of a question mark about the efficiency of all this, because... And now we do have the larger distiller and uh, carbonite converter, and so in theory that makes it more efficient. I wonder if we need mod... Well, we have plenty of spare mod propellant on the station. We could transfer that over. I was wondering whether we needed to convert to monopropellant as well as to LFO, but I don't think we need to. We can fill up on monopropellant thanks to these tanks here. But yeah, not too sure about the efficiency of this whole process. Anyway, I'll come back to you once we've got the thing filled up. Okay, so the lander is now full of fuel. Uh, we've got a full tank there and a full tank there. There are two equal tanks. And the net gain? about 400 units of liquid fuel and 500 units of oxidizer so we're talking four tons of a little bit more maybe four and a half tons of uh, propellant altogether so that's what we get out of a single run with the with the refueler so basically one of the long 1.25 meter tanks we get out of one run from this refueler or from this uh, Oh, I was just noticing our periapsis and apoapsis deviating. That got me distracted. 
uh, from this uh, Carbonite Miner. Okay, so that is the result of this, and so I think that's okay. I mean, it's it would take quite a while to refuel something like the Derek Shuttle, or uh, that's a different series. Um, well, it'll take a long while to refuel pretty much anything except for a small probe. Uh, the Explorer X would take a while. Hmm. Maybe we need a larger refueler. But anyway, and of course with Minimus it's easy to scale up. But anyway, we'll uh, tackle that some other time. The next thing to do will be to uh, wrangle this little asteroid little. This is the largest type of asteroid. And so, but uh, I think I'll take care of that in the next episode. So next episode, uh, the priority is this asteroid and getting it into Minimus orbit and we still haven't uh, checked out whether we can do any carbonite activities on it. it. It it'd be tough to say so. I mean, I don't know. We can't even put a little probe in orbit around it, but I guess we'll have to check somehow. Uh, the A type asteroid we could use as a test, I suppose. We can't put a probe around it. So how will we check for carbonite? There is a carbonite detector on a rover. Speaking of which, we should send a rover over here too. But I really feel like I'm neglecting the moon. Um, obviously our supplies I could do something with. I'm always concerned about supplies. The mm, auto save. Um, Duna is fine, but uh, certainly Duna will hold out until we get to transfer supplies at this point. Anyway. Lots to think about. We've got bases all over the place and I want to basically do all of it. And so it's a little bit tough to figure it out. Uh, we do have a priority here though, so I guess we'll go with that. Maybe you should check if there's a contract for wrangling an E-class asteroid. But uh, we'll do that in the next episode. So for now, I'll leave you with this pleasant view and I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.